Hi, and welcome back. So the diseases of aging are affecting more and more people. And unfortunately, they're affecting younger and younger people. Conditions such as early onset dementia are becoming more and more commonplace. And with no cure, we really need to find out what is causing it and what can be done to prevent these cruel, cruel diseases. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's find out what is being done. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Stephanie Tremblay of Concordia University and published in The Conversation. In it, she discusses her work studying MRI biomarkers of declining health in aging and the types of interventions that could prevent the onset of some diseases of aging. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. The author of this piece starts by painting a picture, a picture of a 65 year old who repeatedly seeks medical help for their failing memory. At first, they're told it's nothing to worry about. And then a year or so later, the same doctor tells them it's just part of the normal aging process until finally the penny drops and everyone realizes it's Alzheimer's disease, which at present there is no cure for. The author says that scenarios like this are unfortunately all too commonplace. Dementia remains largely undetected, even in high income countries such as Canada and the United States, where rates of undetected cases exceed that of 60 percent. But why? Belief that cognitive decline is normal in elderly people and the lack of knowledge of dementia symptoms and of diagnostic criteria among medical doctors have been identified as the main culprits of missed cases and also of delayed diagnosis. Age-related memory loss should not be shaken off as just a normal part of the aging process. Occasionally, forgetting where we parked the car or where we left our keys can happen to anyone. But when these situations become more frequent, it's important to seek medical advice. For many, these lapses in memory will not result in the development of dementia. But in others, these declines constitute an early warning sign. Research has shown that people with mild changes in cognition are at greater risk of developing dementia later in their lives. It has been demonstrated that the disease process starts decades before the appearance of any symptoms such as memory loss. The scientific community recognizes that interventions which aim to slow down or prevent disease development are more likely to be effective when initiated early in the disease's course. Despite this, protocols for early detection are not standard in the medical community, in part because significant gaps remain in our understanding of dementia. In her research, Stephanie Tremblay uses advanced brain MRI methods to characterize brain health in older adults who are at high risk of developing dementia. Her goal is to identify new biomarkers of early pathology, which could lead to improved detection methods in the future. She stated that the proportion of senior Canadians is growing in our population. Dementia is strongly associated with aging. So the number of Canadians diagnosed with dementia, including Alzheimer's, is expected to rise considerably in the next few decades reaching an expected 1.7 million Canadians by the year 2050. This projected increase will put enormous pressure on an already strained healthcare system if no significant actions are taken to reverse this horrible trend. Recent news about promising new drugs to treat Alzheimer's disease also highlight the need for early detection. Clinical trials showed that these drugs are most effective at slowing cognitive decline when administered early in the disease's course. Now, although these new treatment options represent breakthroughs for the Alzheimer's field, more research is definitely needed. That said, these new therapies only act on one disease process, that being the lowering of levels of amyloid, a substance 
thought to be toxic to our neurons, so they may only slow cognitive decline in a very narrow subset of patients. A deeper characterization of other processes on a personalized basis is required to combine these treatments with other dementia strategies. Lifestyle changes, on the other hand, have been shown to decrease the risk of developing dementia with minimal cost and obviously no noticeable side effects. By making dementia risk assessments part of routine medical visits for older adults, those who are most at risk could be identified and counselled on how to maintain their brain health and their cognitive function. At-risk individuals will likely need those interventions the most, being potentially a combination of pharmaceutical and lifestyle interventions. But anyone can benefit from adopting healthy lifestyle habits, which are known to protect against diseases not only of the brain, but also of other vital organs. According to a report published in The Lancet, 40% of dementia cases can be attributed to 12 modifiable risk factors. These include the usual suspects of high blood pressure, obesity, physical activity, diabetes, smoking cigarettes, excessive alcohol consumption, and infrequent social interaction. This could mean that by adopting positive lifestyle habits, theoretically, there could be a 40% reduction of dementia risk, according to this report. While there is no guarantee of warding off cognitive decline, people can greatly reduce the risk of dementia by increasing their physical activity levels, ensuring they are mentally active and increasing their social contact while avoiding smoking and limiting their consumption of alcohol. Unfortunately, early onset dementia is now affecting a growing number of younger people. In America, in 2017, about 131,000 people between the ages of 30 and 64 were diagnosed with some form of dementia. Diagnosis rates increased by 200% from 2013 to 2017 in those aged between 30 and 64. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that cognitive decline has probably increased as our reliance on ultra processed foods has also increased. I'd be interested to see what you think. Let me know in the comments of the YouTube video. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I think it's beyond question that dementia is increasing worldwide and it makes sense that overall lower activity levels and reliance on ultra processed junk food could be one of the causes. What do you think? Let me know in the comments of the YouTube video why you think dementia in general and early onset dementia specifically is on the rise. Well, that's it for today. As always, please take care, stay safe until we meet again.